This video was sponsored by oddbeachexpress.com. Oddbeach Express Stock Media by subscription is a new site that offers high quality broadcast resolution stock media content. Their content includes stock footages up to 5K resolution, music, sound effects, images, and After Effects templates. Sign up today for a free account at oddbeachexpress.com and receive 19 free pre selected stock media downloads. No credit cards, payments, or obligations required. Create your free account today. Hello everyone and welcome to my After Effects tutorial. In this episode, I'm gonna show you how to create these fiery particles in Adobe After Effects. This awesome people looks good and can be used in your title animations, motion graphics and also in some video shots. So this has been created without using any third party plugins and everything is 100% After Effects which also means that the previewing and the rendering is also gonna be quicker. So with that being said awesome people let's get started. I've already created my tutorial composition so I'm just gonna double click that. I'm gonna create a new solid in this. There you go. And I'm gonna call this particles. Alright. I'm gonna go to FX and presets and I'm gonna type in P A R T and you're gonna work with CC particle wall. So take that and drop it onto the solid. And when you preview it, you can see awesome people that we have this yellow fountain uh, just you know coming out. And uh, what you basically need to do is we need to adjust the different settings in order to create this from this. So what we'll do first is we'll go to particles and we'll change the type to shaded sphere right we'll change and the first thing that and the next thing that we'll do awesome people is we'll apply another effect on the same solid which is glow so we'll take the glow from the stylized category and apply it right here i'll tool it down and i will duplicate it in order for you guys to see things better next awesome people we'll go back to particles let me just close this we'll go back to particles and we will bring the both size down to 0.05 and we'll reduce our depth size down to zero. This view awesome people, as you can see, we have very fine detailed particles. All right, so this is looking good. Next awesome people, we'll change the color. So in order to give it that proper fiery look, I think a nice yellow reddish sort of effect should be good. So I think right there, that looks nice awesome people. You can of course go around tweak this uh, color a bit more in order to create that proper yellow red orange effect. Alright, but for the tutorials case, this looks good. Next awesome people, the thing that I really don't like about this is that how it's being emitted, uh, you know, like a fountain or like a pop-up effect. So that's something that I'm going to fix. I'm going to go to producer or actually I'm going to go to physics and I'm going to change the animation type from explosive to direction axis. So if I play this now for you guys, you can see that this is coming out from a direction and it's sort of like an emitter, like a one spot emitter, but this is exactly what we need. This is good. Uh, we'll change the gravity. I'll change the gravity from 0.5 to minus 0.1. And this is what it's going to do is it's basically going to create right, right now. It looks like a straight line, but the particles are actually going a little bit up. Now, the next thing that I really don't like in this is at the speed of the animation. So we'll go to velocity in the physics category and we'll bring this down to zero. So as soon as I do that, you'll see awesome people that the particles, even though they are being created right at one single spot, they're still sort of going up. So this is definitely good. All right, so this is nice. Uh, actually, instead of taking the velocity down to just, uh, you know, very, very like solid uh, zero, we'll, we'll keep it to point one. So, we're having this sort of animation. This is nice awesome people. Next what I'll do is I'll go a little bit at the center of my animation, say about two seconds and then I'll go to producer and I'll go to radius X and I'll increase it like so. The reason I'm doing this awesome people is that I want to have like a nice area of animation. I don't want uh, you know the particles to be emitted out of one spot. So as you can see in the preview the particles are being emitted from this bottom part of the full screen right with their particles are coming out from everywhere not just from one point so that's why we are extending the x-axis so that it mimics that sort of thing right so if i preview it now you can see that the particles are coming out from all the directions this is nice uh next what i'll do is i'll increase the y-axis as well because i don't want it to be just in that one short line if your motion graphic demands that or if your client is asking for it then of course go for it but i would like to have it cover the full screen 
So as you can see, the y-axis in this has been cut quite a lot because the particles need to go up and they need to cover the full screen. If that is not something that you want, then you can keep it short and it's just gonna be in that area. All right, so that is nice. Um, so this is good, we have a little bit of area, but now awesome people, we are having glittery, sparkling sort of effect. It's not staying on the screen for a long time. And that is because right here in the, like in these two options, there's a little bit of fall. So the both rate is set to two. I'll, I'll decrease this down to one. And awesome people, I'll change the longevity or basically the time of the particles staying on the screen to about seven seconds. So. If I preview this, you can see awesome people that now we're getting that proper amber uh, sparks sort of feel. Now, the one thing I really don't like in the animation is that how it starts from nothing and then the particles come in. What I want is that the particles should be on the screen and already animating at the first frame. So in trackboard particular, there is an option called pre-run and we can increase that, but there is nothing like that in uh, the CC particle world. So a quick fix for that would be selecting the layer and just pushing it towards the left. And then also people, in order to fix this area right here, we can just extend the layer like so. So if I preview it now, you can see that right at the first frame, we still have our animation going. This is nice. So we have our base animation done. Now the only thing is how to position it. The one thing I would like to say is that do not move the full layer around like so. This is gonna cause, as you can see, a problem right here where you're getting a cut effect, right? So this is not what we want. Uh, what I'll do is I'll press Ctrl C in order for it to get back in its place. And we need to move the particle emission. So we'll select the CC particle wall. And you can do this by just clicking over here or keeping your mouse. And as you can see, my mouse pointer is changing. I can drag it and bring it sort of down like this. And my particles will emit from that part. Or if you want to get technical and you want to have proper values, another way of doing that is changing or going to the producer settings and moving the position XYZ. So I can move it like so, bring it down. And I can also adjust the Z depth. So if I change that, you guys can see I'm pushing it in the Z space. One thing I would say is that once you are happy with the position, do change the radius Z because this is going to create a nice depth for you guys. So as you can see awesome people that some particles are a little bit bigger in size and some of them are really, really small. This is being caused because of the Z depth. Uh, let me actually increase the bird size just a bit. So I'll take it to 0.7 and this is going to give us a little bit bigger particles, right? So that is how you create these ember particles awesome people. And if you want them to cover the full screen, as you can see right now, they're sort of dying at half screen. Some of them may be crossing it, but most of them are just staying here. So you can go to the pos or the, the, the radius Y and increase that. And as you can see, now they're going to be covering the full screen. And because of the Z depth, we are having some really good uh, depth uh, look. Like as you can see, this particle is so much bigger and there are some small particles as well. So that looks really nice. Uh, one more thing that you can do is you can enable motion blur onto this and it's just going to have a little bit of motion blur. Now, if you don't like this particles look, what I would say is reduce the Z, uh, the Z axis in order for everything to look pretty much the same size so it looks like it's coming out of one place um, now so that is how you create amber particles now the preview the way I made this is I created a BG layer and I dropped in a gradient trap uh, ramp effect on it so let me just do that real quick I'm gonna create a new solid call it BG and I'll go to effects and presets type in ramp apply it to the BG layer bring the BG layer down and awesome people, I'll change the color to a nice dark red orange, something like that. But actually black is also looking really nice. So this is also something that you can keep like so, right? Or you can change it to radial and have it like this. And this awesome people is also looking nice. So this is how you create these amber particles in Adobe After Effects. My name is CJ Style. Thank you so much for joining me on this tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed. I hope you guys learned something today. And uh, I will see you all next time. Thank you for watching and take care.